After a 23 and 24 record in 1987, the Husky softball team experienced a dream season in 1988. Coach D. Abrahamson and Donna Martin, along with the players, were really proud of the team and learned to deal with some serious pressure. And our season went really well. We, you know, we lost some ball games, but out of the nine games we lost, we lost two of them by two runs, and all the others were by one run. So we were in every game all season long, and I think our players learned to play with that kind of pressure. Of, you know, we got to defend a one. Run, run lead or we're behind one run but we you know we can still catch up so I, I think the season um, being as tight as it was really helped us and then when we went to play in regionals um, you know we, we thought being 10th in the country that we were you know, pretty good and we we're confident and stuff but then when the um, seeds came out we were the lowest seed in our region so all of a sudden it was like wow we got some work to do here to make people believe that Husky softball deserves to be here and um, we, we won our first game um, by one run <laughs> Bowling Green. We lost our second game by one run, by one run <laughs> Illinois State and then we had beat Illinois State um, twice who at the time was ranked in the top. The, yeah the interesting, the interesting thing about that team is that we were the first to go to the College World Series and so far the only right. And the only thing that can be broken at this point is the only. <laughs> and I mean, I root for NIU to make to go back to the College World Series sometime and break that, you know, so that it's not the first and only. Um, and I think it's really nice that NIU has celebrated that. Again, the whole season kind of just led up to being able to deal with the pressure and not letting it um, overtake us, but you know, just stay confident and keep doing what we needed to do. I'll tell you, um, I am so proud of that team because, you know, talent-wise, we were very, a little above average. We just, we just gelled, we got along, and we played our hearts out. So then we find out we're going to the World Series and we're going to play, um, right off the go, we're going to play the defendant, we're going to play at UCLA, who, like you said, has a, has a huge a dynasty. <laughs> dynasty going, and the number one pitcher in the country was um, pitching for them at the time. So um, we had our work cut out for us, and we gave up a run in the top of the first. And, and an unearned run. An unearned run in the top first, of the first. Which is unusual for us. But. And that turned out to be the only run of the game. Um, and so we, never, we weren't able to get it back, and so it's like, well. But once again, we've been in one-run games all year. So it's like, all right, well. We hung in there to the end. It didn't work out for us. We go to the loser's bracket, and um, just the way the bracket was set, the defending national champion, was Texas A&M, got upset in their game. So, <laughs> so they we play. <laughs> got sent to the loser's bracket to play us. So we're playing um, now UCLA, who turns out to be the eventual champion, and the team that was the defending national champion. Um, and actually, that game, we were 0-0 to the sixth inning. And then we ended up giving up three runs, which was our biggest loss in the entire year. And I would say as a person, that team, that particular team of all the teams we were each part of, that one forged, I mean, the commitment that I was going to then make the, you know, because it happened my freshman year in particular, you know, um, it just brought together a commitment that was, my whole life at that point was about school and that team and anything that had to do with my development as a person. Losses are not the easiest thing to overcome, but Jill, Beth, and Julie were extremely grateful for the opportunity to play with those teams. One, I, first of all, I was really proud of our team because we showed up, we had a chance, we were so close, and we proved to everyone that we belonged there. Second, I was really proud of Jill because at the banquet before we played, they kind of dissed her because she was a batting, you know, champion, and they were like, who is she? And she proved in that game that she was worth every penny yep. and every <laughs> stat and every accolade she got in that game, so I was really proud of her. A little jealous just because I felt that, you know, we're inside. We're practicing yeah, yeah. in a little gym. These guys are outside all year the, time. the whole year. Yeah. The whole year, and I'm thinking, we We've lost a UCLA one and nothing, and we've been practicing in a gym for you know five months. So a little jealousy 
But I was very uh, proud but of this But on the other team. hand, to me, that was like a, a that felt like a badge. A badge. Yeah. yeah, I mean. That's that, true. What, that is true. I mean, and I felt like I learned different things from both of those games. I mean, one thing I learned as a rookie in the UCLA game was that every single play matters yeah. the same. Whether yeah. it's in the bottom of the first or the bottom of the seventh. True. And that I just have to correct that. And Pat Folletti <laughs> will back me up that that was not a wild pitch. It was <laughs> right. a pass ball. The girls won and was struck out and it went to the backside. <laughs> but I mean, so but we learned that. that yeah, yeah. You know, and right. and 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 yet even within that, not to panic, but also not to take any anything for granted. Anything for granted at all. And then in the A and M game, that game to me is more of a fog and the difference in the score and so what that taught me was that we were still green when it came to that stage. Seniors are extremely important to a team's success and that was no different for the 1988 NIU Husky team. We had graduated a lot. We had four seniors who were tremendous on the 88 team in terms of playing time, leadership, great people, you know, everything you want, and actually our whole infield. It was catcher, first, second, and short. So all in one graduation class. So we had a lot to um, come up with, but we did. We, we had a really good season. We, you know, uh, we had great senior. When I was a junior, when we went down, we had, our seniors were Fantastic. wonderful leaders. So I never had to do any leading, realistically, I just, we, played our game. They were the ones that, okay, you know what? They came in the dugout. I'd have to say a word. Right. When I was out in the field, we'd have conversations, you know, amongst each other, but I never really felt stressed to have to leave. Our seniors, Pat Folletti, Amy Vell, were, I mean, they, took it. they did. Don't you feel yeah, that way? I mean, they were like, much. they were like, listen, Beth, you got this. Julie, yes, right. you got it. it. didn't matter. Like, they would go all the way down the list. And yeah. I just had to play my game. I mean, I keep the ball I feel like there was any the, stress. Keep the throw. No, no, because no, under we had so, so many hitters. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> so many hitters on our team that I knew it, it didn't matter if I got up. If I got a hit, great. I could get things started. But if not, I knew Gilfoy behind me was going to get it or Julie or, you know, I just... Folletti was going to throw somebody out at two, and it, we just, and they it's were great, great leaders. I feel like I, I mean, maybe I led through the way I played, but never felt like I had to change my ways to become a leader. Julie Sexton was only a freshman on the team, but as she explains, this team was an incredible learning experience. Um, I was fortunate as a freshman that I, I got on the field, and that was not an easy task with our team and so I learned the infield from junior I learned the outfield when I was playing in the outfield you know I, I kind of played everywhere when I was playing from Jill um, I I learned how as a freshman I had my first experiences learning how to handle pressure to produce when I was in the age um, and then the rest of the time when I wasn't in the game I was learning about the battery I was watching Patty managed the entire pitching staff. Beth Schrader-Simmons led the Huskies in the circle, posting an ERA of .58 and won 24 out of 29 decisions, but she felt she was calm and collected down the stretch. So my job was to do my job, and I had confidence in the rest of my team that we were going to do it together. And so... I guess the only thing that I really worried about was every pitch, doing my job, and because it wasn't all on my shoulders. And I think that was a huge relief. And the other funny thing about that is I probably would have quit if they wouldn't have given me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> because I was super competitive and um, I wanted to be out there more than anything. Rich. Jill Justin Cothel led the Huskies in all of the major offensive categories this, that season, but saw herself as a different kind of leader other than the f seniors. The, leader, the leadership from Jill was everybody just tried to get on base so she could hit him in. That's <laughs> 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 the leadership. Get on base, Jill will hit you in. It's okay. <laughs> or the second baseman needs a duck because she might just throw that kid out at first. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> That's true. 
In 1972, Title IX was passed for equal opportunities for women in not only sport but in education. Title IX had some good components and some bad Back components. Back in the 70s and the 80s, we had more opportunity to help people manage their finances for, for school and recruiting was different. So there's been some good things and some not good things with Title IX, but in general, um, I, you know, we definitely had access to better facilities after um, Title IX. You know, uh, when, when I first came here, we practiced in Anderson Hall, which is in the physical education building, in the gym. We hit balls off of tees into a net. We actually followed campus recreation. Um, when they closed at 9 o'clock at night, we could practice. So we went 9 to 11. 9 to 11. Or we could have the gym before classes started in the morning, so we could go 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., which meant training room at 5. Um, and um, so that was, those were kind of our choices, but that was the area that we had. And, and um, Anderson was a, was a great home for us. All of a sudden, with, with the improvements with Title IX and, and schools trying to do the right thing and, and improving the situation for the women athletes, um, a, a lot of us on the coaching side, when we came here, we coached and we taught. 50-50 appointments and athletics finally took us all into full-time coaching, which is what the men had. So that was great because now my whole day was about my team instead of half of my day was about class and half of it was, was about the team. We, we probably would not have gone to college. No. no. My, you know, my parents couldn't afford it, that's for sure. Exactly and, right. Um, I was the first kid to go to college yeah. in my family. We just probably wouldn't have gone. I mean, easy and as that. Huge yeah. opportunities. And I huge. Think, I mean, when you talk about you can divide it into opportunities and change. I mean, the opportunities weren't just in scholarships mm -hmm. and in you know better facilities and, and stuff like that. It, it was all of those things, but it was also just changes. I mean, we all experienced the merging of the men's and women's athletic departments. That's right. True. Yeah. That's true. I mean that. That happened when we were there, yeah, and that whole true. transition, um, uh, and that's kind of a unique time in history. Uh, Coach Abrahamson and Martin had a great impact on their players. Jill, Beth, and Julie certainly learned a lot from them as coaches and as people. Yeah, as players, we did not focus on the numbers. No. Ever. No. The, but the irony of that is that one of the most important strategies, I think, we learned from Dean and Donna was how to approach the game by the numbers. Really learned how to break the game down yeah. in a way that nowadays they talk about in Major League Baseball. It made us love the game even more because of the strategy we got into the weeds. Yeah. It was like, ooh, we gotta get this girl out. You right. Got yeah. right. <laughs> you got this one, Beth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Carried our practices, they were very strategic, yeah. which caught our interests. Mm -hmm. Um, they were scientific. Yep, they were yeah, scientific yeah, about yeah. it. Yep. And so and I playful. Mean, I mean, right. I mean, we played handball and right. volleyball, and ball. basketball, and ragball, and I mean, we just did other things to yeah. for conditioning and agility and, and prevent and, burnout from the same. Right. Yeah. And even when we did like just wrenching things, like you know, doing dropout sprints or something, there was always this edge of competitiveness and this philosophical mm -hmm. thing that was gonna unleashed at the end to help think, us learn something. I think they were great at casting vision and we all got on board because right. they communicated it to us. With 13 letter winners returning from the 1987 team, everyone was familiar with each other. The team camaraderie was top notch. <laughs> you we, we, um, we used to play spoons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we played the bag game. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Right. Um, we, we, the, did things together. I mean, the boombox. Oh yeah, we had the music the with eight D batteries. It cost <laughs> me, <laughs> it cost me an arm and a leg for that boombox. But we played music. When we, we were danced, in the vans, we sang. Once we, we teased arrived. each other. Yeah. Once we got in the vans, we slug bug Dean down to death. We had a laughing, laughing, laughing. Little stuff, stuffed animal called Laugh a Man, and when we were supposed to be quiet. We would tease with it and start setting it off. They'd come up back on the bus. I mean, it was a whole... It, there was always... We TP'd their house. Every house. <laughs> and listen, we got it as an excuse I for conditioning. I stayed in the car. <laughs> I used it as an excuse for conditioning. 
but we're running, coach. We're <laughs> running from your house. <laughs> and then uh, payback, our, our morning workouts, when yep. they did the whole poem. Oh, uh, you should have seen a lot of practical, we yeah. were a practical joke kind of You should have seen much. the pranks that happened. Like, yeah. Oh, I haven't, about, I haven't heard about any of these pranks. The party line at the hotel. <laughs> oh, that, that my was, gosh. That was before me. That was you guys. Though. That's right. Get on. Get on. Can you go to the restroom? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Communicated by glow. That's right. I forgot about the glow. Um, but of course, nobody stopped. I, and I think that's going. all part of yeah. the camaraderie oh, yeah. the, that the, brings this team the to be the last. Of with five players and one coach and the team being inducted into the NIU Athletics Hall of Fame, the legacy of the team is noticed as a huge success. I think, um, first of all, just talking about the 60 years of softball and I know 30 years for the 1988 team, I think I'm so grateful to all of the teams that came before us and the trails that they blazed and the fight that they had and all the dedication that they had because we could not have done what we did without them going before us. And then I think that became, it became even more important to us to leave a legacy for the next teams to go um, because of that, because we were on the backs of the people who went before us. And then for me personally, um, the legacy that I would want to leave would be you know, well, first of all, that she loved Jesus. Second of all, she loved people because if you don't love people and you're in a team sport, you're in the wrong, you're team in the wrong sport. Right. <laughs> yeah, sure. And then that we loved softball. Mm -hmm. We loved it. We mm -hmm. loved playing the sport. We loved doing it together. I can remember that practice was one of my favorite times. Yeah, right. It gave you a mental break and you got together with your friends and you did something that you loved. And if you don't like practicing, then. Oh, yeah you know, then on the field just doesn't happen. It, it's something that I'm sure all of us as coaches have told our players over the years, you you have to like practice as much, if not more than you like games, because you'll spend infinitely more time doing it. Right, and, right, right. And, and because we took our entire college experience so seriously, I mean, everyone on that team did. That team, um, in their legacy is that what we did 30 years ago that has not been replicated was also done at a time where if you tried to compare apples and oranges to today, it, you couldn't. Um, coaching, staff, yeah, you know, it was throughout the league. Everyone had two coaches. They didn't have a whole team of, a of pitcher coaches, coach, a facility, yeah, coach, coach, coach uh, corporate sponsorships, facilities, right. uh, you name it. The, the way intercollegiate athletics exists today is not the same as it did right. back then. And so you put what we did back then and her leadership of that in context of today, and it, it makes it that much more remarkable. Mm -hmm. The fact that the team was smart and could win? Yep. I know. Yep. Well, thanks to me and the smart <laughs> uh, It's aside. not true. Well, uh, uh, and and that, that, that was a, uh, that, that was, was huge. That yeah. was absolutely, a, you know, every, every rookie got that handbook that said, you know, academics, softball, and social life in that order. Right on. And right. it didn't matter where. I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't matter where any particular player fell on the spectrum of academic prowess or athleticism right. yeah. or whatever. She set that standard exactly as yeah, our coach great that, that that mattered, mattered and that you need to be as successful in your preparation for your life after these four years as you care about being successful on the field. Right. For NIUHuskies.com, I'm Sam Vibrock.